Alright, welcome to this uh, complete army overview for the Tyranids and you may have already noticed there is a, a army overview for them already on the channel but big changes have been made to this Tyranid force so I thought it would be worth uh, doing a completely new video for them showing those changes and then the new tactica for the force or how the force has evolved it's not radically different uh, but I think I've moved it on uh, to a different stage so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, run through the codex uh, introduce each of these units and then uh, I'll explain why I chose them and then we'll stand back look at the whole army and then uh, see what the overall battle plan and tactica for the force is and hopefully uh, this new tyranny force will be more deadly and uh, bring some victories on the channel but we'll have to see Right, so here's the original force. Uh, some elements of the army work really well, but uh, it did get caught out in games. Quite small and compact for Tyranids. Uh, the theme was monstrous creatures and sort of an assault-based army. I still like that idea, uh, but struggled in games with them. Uh, there were some weak elements to the force, and uh, that's what I'm going to be covering here. So you have an army that's not performing very well, and instead of starting all over again, uh, just you base it on experience of games that you've played and uh, a good advice is just to keep units that you think have done well and then units that haven't performed very well consistently then you just remove those and that frees up points for you to then invest uh, in different models and upgrades uh, trying to make that force a bit better so uh, looking at the force here uh, there were some elements that uh, didn't perform particularly well. The idea was to take lictors, uh, they were to then sort of deep strike or infiltrate and then uh, they'd use the pheromone trail to bring up other deep strikers without scattering but it didn't really work in games and the lictors got isolated and uh, they were dealt with usually quite effectively. So I have decided to remove all of the uh, lictors from the force. Now at 50 points each that has freed up 250 points to play with, which is a lot of points. Uh, I also then uh, thought that two trigons was a bit too much overkill, so I have decided to remove one of the trigons. That's 190 points, or even more if I, with the uh, regenerate upgrade. Um, so was happy with. The Morlock and one Trigon, that's fine. Uh, the Raveners, I thought, have uh, done particularly well, so they are going to stay in the force. So, with those elements removed, uh, that's freed up a lot of points, and then, given Regenerate to everything, that absorbed a lot of points as well, so I've uh, decided to drop some of the Regenerate from the models here, and uh, that's freed up a lot of points. So what you're going to see now, uh, is we're going to go through the Codex, build up this force again, You'll see elements that are already there, and then I'm going to introduce the new models, and then we'll talk about the overall philosophy and game plan uh, for the new force. So, uh, just taking the codex here, we'll go straight over to uh, HQs. It's just structured differently to the new codexes here. They've still got the old star entries at the back. So, we'll start here. So, beginning with HQ. Uh, the Hive Tyrant, I still rate the Hive Tyrant, and I battled with the idea of uh, bringing him back on foot again, um, but then uh, I'd have to invest in Hive Guard to protect him, uh, and then the various upgrades on the one, but Lash Whip and Bone Sword, and then Strangle Form Cannon, so it's all using up a lot of points, so have decided to stick with the Winged Hive Tyrant, so just 165 points and then 35 points for wings and the way this force has worked out for points wise it's been quite tight um, that's all the upgrades are going to give him uh, not even regenerate for him that's saving uh, 30 points that I've been able to invest in other units uh, now one upgrade I can do um, and I'm going to need to do the conversion work for it um, is for monstrous bio cannons this is just learning from having fought against uh, Tyranids and that is to take twin linked devourers of brain leech worms now the way it works is wings are an upgrade but they don't replace the two sets of Sivan Tannins there so I can uh, purchase 
two lots of twin linked Varus brain leech worms. And that will be two lots of six shots at twin linked strength six. Very, very good. So from the air, he'll be able to bring down some firepower. Very, very good, very, very good upgrade. Uh, so that'll be 30 points. Um, to do that, I think I'll do that in future lists. It's definitely going to be an option. I'll have to try and free up 30 points in the force. I think I can do that by simply removing regenerate from one of the other models. So it's a good possibility there. And it will mean he'll be winged. He'll have that protection in the air. It's a bit better protected. Uh, he'll be able to bring down some good firepower and then dish out the, the psychic powers as well. So the winged hive tyrant is in. Uh, for definite, I think there's great potential with him, and even more potential if I can give him that shooting uh, capability. But for now, just for this particular list, I'm going to keep him as he is with that upgrade to come. And after, so after the Winged Hive Tyrant, I'm going to stick with the Turvagon here. Nice model. Um, Tough six wounds there. Uh, again, it's uh, got psychic powers, synapse creature. So it's a good anchor point for the force, for the Turvagon. Now he's HQ here, uh, but again, I'm going to do that troops choice where I'm going to take 30 Termagants. You can see him just up there, and then that makes him troops. So you've got troops here, troops there. Okay, now uh, whilst we're on troops. I'm going to bring in one of the changes to the force. I have uh, taken the uh, from the Death Storm uh, set the Children of Cryptus uh, troops, which is the Brood Lord, and then the Eight Geniuses. 215 points. Uh, so I've got my Eight Gene Stealers with Rending Claws. Always like Gene Stealers, but struggled with them, they just infiltrate and they get caught out and blown away but this formation they might do a bit better and then you get the spawn of Cryptus the all new Broodlord much bigger and more intimidating uh, really nice to have him in the force there so uh, rules for these guys 215 points, count as troops, uh, which adds a bit of strength to the force to have another troops option there. Uh, just regular genius stealers, they have their rending claws and cyber talons, which is good. And then the spawn of cryptos, weapon skill 7, strength and toughness 5, free wounds, initiative 7, 4 attacks, and he's got a 4 up save. Uh, he has preferred enemy, uh, they have infiltrate, they have stealth. And then he knows two psychic powers, the horror and dominion. So uh, for those points, I think that's a good uh, unit to take. Uh, it's quite a lot. You've got to get through his bodyguard to get to this guy. And then he's at toughness five. And then three wounds on top of that as well. So excited about that one. And it's troops as well. It's a bit of durability in there. Uh, and then nasty in combat if they can make it. That's all the troops for the force. We really are swapping him out for one of the Trigons, still with a couple of points to spare. Then, uh, moving along, I'll introduce them now, that's Venom Fropes. Now, there are three slots for Elites in the Force, so what I've done with these Venom Fropes here, we just recently painted them, these are the new plastic releases from Games Workshop. I've decided to take them as three individual units. Uh, not upgrades, so just flat uh, 45 points. So just 45 points each, uh, and they will, each of these will be placed uh, tactically in the force, and you'll see that when we look at the whole army and talk about the philosophy, but there's a real tactical use for these very important units these have become, and that's because of the uh, spore cloud uh, that they give out, that 6-inch shrouded rule. Uh, can because this is an assault based I want to protect my tyrants as they move in to close combat a good way to do that is to give them enhanced cover saves and shrouded is uh, excellent so that's elites just move these back and then we'll go on to fast attack the raveners are in 
And I think for them to be effective, they do need to be a unit of six. You've got to have that strength in numbers for them to work. They did perform particularly well in some of the games. Uh, three wounds each, strength for toughness, fort weapon skill five, three attacks each, and they get the two pairs of Simon Tans, so they're on four attacks each, basic, um, and then exchange one pair of Simon Tans for rending claws, so they'll be able to take on heavy arama. It's only five points each, and I'm very glad I've taken that before. This proved to be very handy indeed, taking on things like Terminators and Space Marines. Six of them. Uh, works out at 210 points. Quite expensive, but there's a lot of wounds in there. Uh, there's really 18 wounds for the opponent to get through. A low armor save, but uh, we've got a shrouded potential now in the force, and that should help keep them alive a bit longer. Another good thing about these is they can deep strike, and also their speed as well. They count as uh, beasts, so they'll be moving very, very fast, and often they have caught the opponent out. Uh, then coming down, I'm going to keep the hive crone, and I just to have some air support. No uh, regenerate for him, just a flat 155 points. Uh, he comes with the draw cannon standard, that's quite handy. It's uh, strength 6, uh, AP 4, and then. The tentaclids, they're alright, but he's also got the uh, raking strike as well. So just a presence in the air, and then potentially you can come down and, and do some damage as well. Five wounds, and four up saves. Not bad. Can't complain. So the um, so the hive crone is in, and that just gives me some more more of a presence in the air. I think that's important. First of all, it's not necessarily to dominate, but at least have something there. Then going on to heavy support. With the new way this army is going forwards, and uh, I think some Tyranny players will be happy with this, I'm bringing back Carnifexes into the force. I've always liked them. Um, there are other bigger models now for Tyranids, but still, the Carnifex uh, is a good unit. So, decided to take two. I'm going to take one at 120 points and then just leave him. Two pairs of Simon Tans, he's going to get extra attacks, that's four attacks as basic. It's four wounds, toughness six, strength nine by default. So most vehicles he will smash to bits. And then one on its own is okay, but two working together I think will do better. And uh, with a spare 15 points and give him a crushing claw. So put this one in the front, he'll be the first to die in the brood, and he's going to shield the guy with the crushing claws here to make short work of any vehicle. Uh, that's just 15 points, give that to him, so that makes him 135, and uh, that's not too bad. There's eight wounds uh, in there for the opponent to get through. No uh, regenerate at all. If they die, they die, uh, and it just keeps that points cost right down. So two kind of fixes have made it into the force. So still keeping that themed uh, monstrous creature. Very assault bases, no shooting attacks for these. They're just to uh, go forwards and smash into the foe. Right, still on heavy support here. Uh, the Trigon is in. Another huge monster in the force. Um, loads of attacks. Uh, two pairs of Simon Tans, it's an extra attack there, it's five basic, six attacks basic, uh, strength six, toughness six, six wounds, weapon skill five, uh, he's pretty good. Um, and the idea for him is just to deep strike him, uh, he'll turn up, create trouble, opponent has to deal with him, try and plough through six wounds. Um, and in the force, just check in here, no regenerate for him, again, keeping the points cost of this force down, so it's going to be a bit of a bigger tyranny army. Uh, so... Uh, the Trigon has made it in. And then uh, the Morlock, which has performed well in games. And it's another strength 6, toughness 6, 6 wounds uh, monstrous creature in the force. No regenerate for him either. Um, saved a lot of points by keeping that off the force. Uh, so uh, the Morlock is in. That brilliant deep striking uh, terror from the deep ability uh, means that he definitely makes it in as well. I can sh 
so you've got plenty of deep striking units here. I can appear at any part of the table. Uh, I can burrow down, appear again, which is handy to have. I've got uh, winged and flying units in the force. I've got beasts. There's some speed to the force, but it is raw fighting power uh, this Tyranid army is based on. I hope it does well. Smallock, and that's it. That's the last unit. So we're going to look at the whole force here, and then uh, a very important point here is to talk about the tactics and about this force and how I plan to use it in games. Right, so there's the force laid out. I've left out the Venom for Opes. You're going to see how I'm going to place those in a minute. Uh, so the way I've played it in games before is it is a majority uh, assault-based army, but often in games you're going to need to hang back and defend. Uh, an objective. So the role for that, as in previous games, will be uh, for the Turvagon to take that unit of uh, 30 Gaunts and then to breed out each turn uh, units of Gaunts as well and just to sit on the objective. For those, you've got the monstrous creature guarding it, loads of troops, and then uh, the psychic powers for him as well. But then, uh, importantly for this formation, they're going to sit in, usually in cover, ruins, craters, whatever, try and hold that position to enhance that, to protect them a bit more. I'll stick one of the Venom Fropes uh, with that unit. So now, if they all stick within six of him, which they do, they hold all together, then they'll all get shrouded. So if you're in ruins here, four plus, plus shrouded, they're on two plus in cover. Uh, so excellent protection for them. And the monstrous creature, if I can obscure him uh, and give him a four plus save, then it will go up to two plus. Uh, with the Venom Throat there. I think that will help them as they try and defend uh, a position. So that's a, a very handy little upgrade to have uh, or, or unit to enhance uh, that formation just there. Then uh, I have got units here that can operate individually. Uh, the, the Raveners here, Hive Crone, uh, the Morlock, the Trigon, uh, these guys here, they can work on their own. They don't really need uh, any assistance or I can lump them together uh, with the Carnifex Assault. This formation here is just designed to push forwards and then smash away anything in its path and then the Winged Hive Tyrant just to stick nearby uh, granting the Synapse range to stick within 12 or within 18 if he uses uh, his uh, Psychic Power to protect them as they go forwards, if they're hugging some cover and they're obscured uh, or even if they're in the open I think sticking uh, another Venom Probe with them will just protect them a bit more so you're kind of looking at something like this the Venom Probe protected behind so he'll get cover plus his own shrouded and then uh, the Carnifex is in front will get shrouded plus any cover uh, bonuses that they get as they move forwards as well. Just again, adding some protection to them, I think will work quite well. Uh, if the opponent wants to get rid of him, then he's got to shoot through and try and uh, weed him out before he can get to those. And that uses up time and uh, shooting from the uh, from his force. Now, I'm just wondering, and maybe you can answer the question here on the channel if some of you have done this. If I'm playing it like this, uh, granting Shrouded here, then if the Winged Hive Tyrant is in the air, but within six, does he get Shrouded on top of that as well? That's a question for you to answer. If you know the answer for sure, then leave it in the, the comment section uh, at the bottom of this video. As I said, this unit, uh, these pushing forwards, then if I then decide to bring the Raveners in with them. So I decide not to deep strike but to get these to join uh, that assault forwards, keep them uh, within six of the Venom Probe. Then they will get shrouded as they move forwards. So he can grant that shrouded to anyone within six. So, so that benefit, the more units that can benefit that, uh, the more value for points. Uh, that venom probe is. And then I'm thinking if these are out on the flank somewhere, uh, uh, but in my deployment zone, I decide to set them up within the deployment zone, then why not get a venom probe to go up with them as well? If they're already on stealth, 
then they'll get stealth and shrouded um, for their cover save and I think that will enhance them as well. I may not decide to do that, I have a spare venom freight, but I think someone's going to, uh, the opponent's going to try and remove one of these from play then I can stick a second one in uh, so he's now got to get through two individual venom ropes to get rid of that shrouded uh, benefit so I think uh, that that adds a lot of protection to the force and if I can shroud this close assault army as it goes in I think that's stand a lot chance of delivering more models into close combat which is where this army specialises in so that's the force. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, potential here, a lot of different combinations that I can do. And uh, it's trying out a new uh, enhancement to the force, and that's the Venom Probes. Uh, and taking three of them, I can distribute those around the army and just add some real protection to the force. Uh, I've got the monstrous creatures that I wanted. I've got speed uh, in the force with the flyers and the uh, ravenous. I've got deep strike capability and then plenty of uh, close combat as well. So looking forward to games of these tyrannies here. Uh, the only one on uh, regenerate is the Turvagon here. I'm just thinking that he sits back uh, taking wounds, uh, one or two wounds, then he can regenerate them, stay alive longer. Um, I'm just thinking here, if I'm going to give the two sets of uh, devourers of brain, brain leech worms, then 30 points here, I can lose the regenerate and give him that shooting upgrade, which I think I may, I may well do uh, as a slight adjustment to the force. But there it is, 1850 points of Tyranids, uh, slightly bigger and uh, perhaps uh, a bit more highly evolved uh, as they will take the fight to the different armies on this channel. But I hope they do well, looking forward to using them and uh, we'll see how they do. But uh, at the bottom of this video, leave your comments. Um, Tyranny players, uh, leave your advice, what you think of this force, will it work, uh, what works for you, leave your comments down there. Uh, check out the battle reports fe featuring Tyranids on the channel. Uh, also, uh, the full painting tutorial, uh, I've done it for the Hive Chrome, uh, but you can apply that technique to any uh, Tyranid figure. It's one of the fastest uh, techniques that I've got, uh, very effective, and uh, if you like the look of this force here, then check out that full painting tutorial. But there it is, there's the review for the army. Uh, let's hope they do well in games and uh, thanks for watching and tune in next time.